Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is David and in today's video, I'll be giving you a full tutorial on how to use Google Merchant Center. Now, by the end of this video, you'll be fully equipped to manage your products effectively, optimize your listing and get your business ready to reach millions of potential shoppers. So if that interests you, then stick around, subscribe and let's get into today's video. Now, the very first thing we're going to go ahead and do is head on over to Google Merchant Center's main homepage. And you can do that by just going to google.com slash retail and you'll be directed to a page that looks something like this. Now, depending on when you watch this video, the homepage might change, but the steps are going to remain the same. So let's go ahead and create a Merchant Center account together if you don't have one by pressing the Start Now button. Now, once we do that, we'll be directed to this page over here where Google is just asking us some information about our business. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, yes, I do sell products online. And yes, I have a physical store. And then I'm just going to go ahead and give my website title over here. Once you have your store website link in there, you can go ahead and press the continue button. So once we press the continue button over here, Google is basically telling us that they can show our products on Google for free. And it's just showing us the different things we need in terms of our own online store products and not services, very self-explanatory stuff. So over here, we can just go ahead and press the continue to merchant center button. Now, once we click that button, we'll be directed to this page over here, which says enter your business information. So just go ahead and put in your business name. I'm just going to go ahead and put in mine. And then over here, just put in your country and then press the continue merchant center option. So once we do that, we'll be directed to this page right here, which is our Google merchant center main dashboard. Now on this dashboard, you can go ahead and put in information such as your shipping details, your return policy, your products, and a lot more. Now we'll go ahead and do this together. But before we do that, I want to quickly run through these different settings available on the left. So the first setting over here is our products tab, which is very self-explanatory. On this tab, you can go ahead and add any products to your store. In our shipping and returns tab, we can go ahead and put in any shipping policies we have and any return policies we have. And then in our business information tab, we can go ahead and put in our basic business information, such as what countries we do business in, so on and so forth. In our store quality tab, this is basically a scorecard that Google creates, which compares our store to other businesses. So it's very helpful. And then over here under the marketing section, we have the free listings tab. This is basically Google telling us that at no added cost, our products are showing up on Google search. And then over here, we have our ad campaigns tab, which is basically that once you have your Google ads account connected to your Google Merchant Center, you can see information about your campaigns right here. And then finally, we have our summary and products tab. And over here, you can basically get information like clicks on your products and the different data points that you want to see to see if your products are doing well. So that's all of these tabs in a nutshell. And now we can go ahead and begin our first step, which is adding a product. So let's go to our products tab right here and then press the add products option. Now, when it comes to adding products on Google Merchant Center, there's multiple different ways you can go ahead and do this. You can go ahead and add products from a file. So basically, this is a file that you create that contains all of the different information and then go ahead and actually import it directly into Google Merchant Center. You can go, go ahead and use a Google Sheet that Google Merchant Center provides you, put in the information over here, and then every time you update it, it will basically reflect on your Google Merchant Center, or you can manually do it by adding products one by one. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can add a product one by one. But before I do that, I'll quickly show you what the Google Sheet looks like so that if you ever want to create or add products in bulk, you can go ahead and do that. So if we select this use Google Sheets option very quickly, we can go ahead and press use template right here. And once we do that, we'll be directed to this page over here, which is a Google Sheet that Merchant Center has provided us. And basically over here, you can go ahead and put in all of the information about your product, like your title, your description, your availability, and you can enter it all over here. And basically what Google Merchant Center will do is all of the information here will be pulled into their account directly. Okay, so it's a very cool way to go ahead and add as many products as you want and then make changes directly on this Google Sheet. So now if we go back to our Merchant Center page, we're going to go ahead and actually choose the add products one by one so that I can show you how this looks visually. So let's go ahead and press the continue option together. So once we do that, we'll be directed to this page over here where we can go ahead and choose the countries in which we want to sell this product. So let's go ahead and select a country. I'm just going to go ahead and select, for example, Australia and then press confirm. Once we have that in there, you can go ahead and press continue. So once we do that, we'll be directed to this page over here, which is our main products detail page. And over here, we can put in all of the information from the title of our product, the description, the product images, how much it's going to cost, the condition, so on and so forth. There's a lot of different settings available over here. And for the sake of this tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and fill them out myself, and then I'll run through the settings with you once I do that. 
So here we are guys, I went ahead and added some basic information for a dummy product, which is a men's luxury watch. So the first thing I did was give my store URL of where I'll be selling this watch, then give it a title called men's luxury watch, the brand, which is 10 minute tutorials. And then over here, just give a very basic description. Over here, I went ahead and added a picture. You can add multiple pictures if you want. And then over here under the price condition and availability, I basically said the product type is watch. I went ahead and chose a category for it. You can choose any category you want. I chose watches for condition. You have the different settings like new refurbished or used. And then over here, we can go ahead and set in our price, our currency and the availability. So for example, over here, you can select in stock, pre-order, back order, so on and so forth. You can even put a sale price like I did and a sale date range. So I'm saying this watch is worth a hundred dollars but the sale price is 70 for the next week. So that's good. And then over here, you can go ahead and put in a product identifier if you have one. If you don't have one, Google Merchant Central will assign you one automatically. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip it. And then over here, I'm just going to go ahead and say, no, I don't have any of these unique identifiers. This is a one of a kind product with no identifier. You can go ahead and put in if you have one. Once you have your identifier set up, we can go ahead and scroll to the language and country setting over here. Very self-explanatory. Choose where you want to sell it and what the language for this product is. And then over here, you can go ahead and set up any custom labels you want so that you can see or identify this particular product. I'm just going to go ahead and skip this for now because I don't need that. And once you have that done, you can scroll over to the apparel product details section. And then over here, you can go ahead and put things like the color for your product, the size. So for example, if you're selling clothing or shoes, you can go ahead and put in a size of small, medium or large, and then put in the size type right here, for example. And then right here, you have the size system. So for example, if you're selling based on US shoe system, you can say that these size are representative of US shoe sizes and you can put that in here. For gender, I put in male. For my material, I put in metal. And then over here for age group, I went ahead and selected adults, so 13 plus watches. And once we have that, we can scroll over to the next settings over here. Now these settings are very self-explanatory in terms of is this an adult product? So if it has any sexual content, so on and so forth, it doesn't. If you want to bundle this watch with other products, you can go ahead and select that over here. And then over here, for example, if you're selling environmentally friendly products, you can go ahead and put that over here in terms of the ratings. Once again, I'm just going to go ahead and skip this for my watch, but you can add all of these details if you want, including certification, so on and so forth. So once we have that done, we can move on over to the next section over here, which is our shipping taxes and returns. And right over here, you can go ahead and create a shipping label. And Google Merchant Center is telling us that shipping labels allow us to group products together so that we can configure specific shipping rates in Merchant Center. Over here, we're not setting the shipping rate, but we're just creating a label, for example, free shipping, so that Google Merchant Center can combine all of the free shipping items together. And then once we have that done over here, you can go to your transit time and do the exact same thing over here for this particular product. And once we have all of these settings in place, we can scroll on over to the next side, which is tax category. And over here, if you have a particular category that you need to put in, you can enter that. So once you have all of your information in place, you can go ahead and press the save option right here. So once we've completed that, we'll be directed to this page right here, which is basically our confirmation that our product was set up. We can see a product ID that Google Merchant Center assigned automatically to us, the different conditions, colors, so on and so forth. And then over here, we can see a status of processing. So basically when you add a new product, Google needs some time to just process it. It takes up to 15 minutes or so, and then you can check the status once it's enabled. So that's how you basically add a product onto your Google Merchant Center account. And if you want to make any changes in the future, you can go ahead and press this edit product option. So with that said, now we can move over to the next step, which is our shipping and returns. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and press this X option right here. And once we do that, we can see that right here, we have our product available in our product tab, and we can go ahead and set up our shipping and return. So let's go ahead and do that together right now. Now, when it comes to our shipping policy, we can go ahead and add it by pressing this button right here. So let's go ahead and do that. And once we do that, we'll be directed to this page over here where we can go ahead and name our policy something. So let me just, for example, call this free shipping. And then I'll say that I have free shipping to people in Australia. Once you have that set up, you can press the continue option right here. And then over here, I'm just going to go ahead and say that my particular free shipping applies to all of my products, or you can choose a particular product in your case. And then once you have that selected, we can go ahead and press the continue option right here. So once we've completed that step, we'll be directed to this page over here where we can go ahead and set up our delivery times. So for example, if our handling time takes about five days maximum, we can go ahead and put that in there. Our transit time, we can go ahead and add a time of, for example, five more days. So we're basically telling people that your product will be shipped in about 10 business days. So you can go ahead and put in whatever information you want over here, select your time zone, and then press the continue option. 
Finally, guys, over here, you can go ahead and set up your shipping cost. So you can go ahead and select free shipping. And that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'll just keep it as is and press the save option right here. So once we've completed that, we can see that right here, we have a confirmation which says your shipping information has been added to Merchant Center. I have my free shipping, 10 business days, two people in Australia. So very straightforward. I can go ahead and press the done option right here. So once we do that, we can see that right here, all of my information is available to me in my shipping tab over here. So I can go ahead and make any changes or if I want, I can go ahead and even delete it. Now, similarly, we can go ahead and add in our return policy. So let, let's go ahead and put that in over here. So when it comes to our return policy, you can go ahead and select this option right here. And what Google Merchant Center will ask you is for a return policy URL. So you can go ahead and put that in over here and then you can say what countries that the return URL apply to. So for my case, I'll just go ahead and put Australia and just give me a second while I go ahead and actually put in a URL. So there we go, guys. I went ahead and added in my return URL right here. And then I can go ahead and select some options like do I accept returns for defective and non-defective products? I'll just keep it a yes right now, feeling very generous. And then over here for our exchanges, do you accept exchanges? I'll say yes, I do accept exchanges and then press the next option. So once you have that done over here, we can go ahead and select how many days for you to actually accept a return. So I'll just go ahead and say 30 days and then go ahead and say that it's only for new product. So you can go ahead and put in that information over here and press the next option. And then over here, I can go ahead and say it's by mail. And then over here, I can go ahead and include a return label, which is included in the package, or I can go ahead and say that you need to download it and print it, which I can go ahead and put over here and then assign a cost to it if it's required. So that's how you can go ahead and put in all of this different information and set up your return processing time, which I can set to about seven days. And once you have this information in place, you can go ahead and press the next option. So once we have that completed, we'll be directed to this confirmation page over here where we have the different settings we went ahead and chose. And over here, you can scroll down right here to just press this confirm option. And then once you do that, just go ahead and press this save option right here. So there we go, guys. We can see that right over here in our return policy section, we have the one that we created. So that's how you can go ahead and put in your shipping and your returns policy. Now, the last thing I want to talk about very quickly before I wrap this video up is how you can connect your Google ads account to your merchant center so you can run shopping ads and see how the campaigns are performing. So let's go to our ad campaigns option right here. So go ahead and click that. So once you click that, you'll be directed to this page over here where we can go ahead and press this get started button to basically link our Google ads account to our Google Merchant Center. So once we do that, we'll be directed to this page over here where we can go ahead and link our Google ads account. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now by pressing this link option. And then over here, because I already have my Google ad account activated, I can just go ahead and link it right away. If you don't have it activated, you can go ahead and select the new account option and then set it up yourself. Or if you want to go ahead and do it on an account you don't manage, you basically just need their ID, which you can find in the Google Ads dashboard. Once you have it done, just go ahead and press the link account option right here. So once you've successfully linked your Google Ads account, guys, we can see that over here we have a confirmation which says that it's linked and we're good to go. So with that being said, everyone, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found it informative. If you did, then go ahead and click the like button. And my goal is that now you are a pro at Google Merchant Center and can begin creating your own products. On that note, guys, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.